Ah, the countryside. Beautiful. Just beautiful. I mean, look at those mountains. Just simply breathtaking. God, why do I hate getting views? The way. Winner of multiple Misao Awards, back before the horror craze of RPG Maker games. Not to be confused with the indie game on scene, or the movie. Some of you may have already noticed that the earliest two videos that I had on my channel were related to this game. It's one of my favorite RPG Maker games, and I honestly think that in many ways it not only contends with some of the best RPGs, but outshines them. Today you will die! <laughs> I'll kill you, you witch! That isn't to say that it's not flawed or anything like that, though. I'd say that it's honestly a hard sell if it wasn't for the creator allowing you to skip just about anything that you don't like. Don't like Can RPGs? I'm done. I'm done! It's over! That's completely fine. Just turn off the combat and never question it again. Don't like the minigames? Or even some of the puzzles? Well, the way was truly ahead of its time. Not only beating episodic games to the punch, but implementing a game reviewer mode as well. Ultimately, this game is brought down by the engine it was made with, but uh, don't let that stop you from trying to enjoy it if you can. The setting is simple. <laughs> Using religion to fool the masses, a religious group known as the Guided have more or less convinced the entire population that the Industrial Revolution had consequences. As such, settlements are considered to be an abomination to God. A mystical force known only as the Rolling Mist ensures that all of mankind continues to travel what is only known as the Way. However, while this affects the large majority of God-fearing travelers, it doesn't stop people from settling down. But much like the majority of the game's people, you have to keep moving forward. You may stop at a settlement from time to time, sure, but you're never going to stay, and you can never go back. Despite this, this game has a near unrivaled level of exploration. Watch me swing right in! Most areas in the game have hidden goodies, and this game actively rewards you for searching for them. I mean, I love exploration in RPGs. When well done, it's excellent. But, you know, what's the point of bothering if the item that I get is just going to be replaced, or if it's just like a normal ass potion? Not an issue here at all. Weapons, armors, consumables, those don't exist. Instead, you use a unique aura system and you absorb items through notches in your sword. Ultimately, what this means is that anything that you find in a chest is always a direct improvement for the main character. You are actively being rewarded for finding these upgrades. Although the amount of rewards increases as the game progresses, they will never fall off. However, combat is actually not something that I'm going to talk about for this review. I mean, it's okay, but there's a reason that you can toggle it on and off at every save. It's unique, but tedious for normal encounters. If you've ever played an RM2K game before, you know how much of a slog that it can be. What I like to do is turn regular battles off and then on again for bosses. It's much more enjoyable that way. The game has a rock, paper, scissors minigame, and it's actually pretty cool, and is consistently important throughout the game, with new features being added with each episode. All of that takes second place to the story though, and that's mostly what I'm going to be talking about here today. This game goes places that no other game of its kind dares to go, and I have absolutely been spoiled by it. It's very rare that I play a game these days where I can say that a majority of the main cast get enough screen time to develop and grow. Even less so when I say that no one in the main cast is safe. At the end of the later episodes, it's not uncommon for someone that you've known for the past few episodes, if not the entire game, to just drop dead. But we're getting a bit ahead of ourselves. The Way is a game about a wanderer named Rue. Now Rue, he's been searching for this girl named Serena since they were kids, after a tragic event that separated the two of them. It sounds really basic, I know, but here's the thing. Rue isn't just some average guy. He's been looking for this girl for years, and right off the bat, something just isn't quite right about his story, and as the game progresses, so does the escalation of bizarre and violent events. But I'm aware that the premise isn't exactly enough to sell this game on. What really makes this game great is the adventure, the characters, and the events that follow. The game comes in episodes, but you're not really going to start to see shit hit the fan until episode 4. Don't be deceived though, as um, I think that this slow start isn't just a good choice, I think that it's downright necessary. You start off as the most basic of basic bitches. I mean, your first experience is being robbed and left for dead. You get beaten multiple times within the first episode, two of which are brutal life or death situations. But gradually, you start racking up those victories, yet even with those wins on your belt, the game lets you know that there are forces out there beyond your comprehension that do exist 
and can and will kick your shit in. Mystery niggas. Once you reach Estrana, that's when shit gets real good. And I'm going to be dropping some spoilers here for you all to get interested in the game. I'd say click off if you don't want to be spoiled, but let's be real. This game is a fat, juicy steak under the veneer of a rotting egg, and unless I crack it open, you might not even give it a shot. There's been a gradual buildup over the last three episodes of questionable shit our main character has done. And this is where the game really starts to shine. So you're chilling in this club and, uh... Ah, shit. Everyone's dead. Hey, you know, we kind of need to know where Serena is, and it kind of sucks that we can't talk to the one person who might know something about it. Maybe, just maybe, if we do enough questionable things, we might be able to have a little talk with her. So, you know, we're waiting in this park, and this old lady shows up, and you know, she's genuinely kind, probably the kindest person that you've interacted with thus far. And you know, she just wants to talk to you about the love of her life. And you know, our boy Rue here, he can really relate. He seems really happy to talk about it, you know? It's not often that he gets such a such a nice heartwarming moment. So it comes as a bit of a surprise when after you talk to her for the second time, your partner, part of the gangster organization known as the Aristati, tells you to follow her home. And it's there that you find out that the flesh is quite literally rotting off of her body and that the only reason that she's still alive is that a high ranking of the guided is her husband. You know, that's that's really funny and all, but that doesn't quite answer why we're in our house or anything like that. You know, what could our gang possibly want with this information? I can't believe this story you're telling me. It's macabre. I think that the important thing to note about this event is that it's a smaller part of a much larger chain and that it's sandwiched between two of the worst things that the main character is directly responsible for. I think that the story is fantastic, although I'm aware that there's a big difference between what people see as a good book story and a good game story. What's going on with you? What are you talking about? New things are constantly being thrown at you, whether it be new gameplay mechanics and minigames or new plot threads. And I would have hated to play this when it came out because, man, just about every episode ends on a cliffhanger. There's always something interesting happening. Even when something as simple as a tournament is getting a little bit too slow, you know, we gotta go into this cave. Oh look, everyone's dead. <laughs> and with that, and the little drops of info that you get, these wonderful characters are just woven in so finely. You learn about them throughout the course of the story, and it was always just enough to make me care about them and become interested in seeing what they do next, or if I'll even see them again. As good as the characters are, they serve as a stepping stone to build up the world. This is especially true for the groups in the game, as something I initially didn't notice is that regardless of the actions of the guided, they're justified in virtually everything that they do. Receiving subtle psychic messages from God, they can solve moral dilemmas such as should I stone this man's wife and should I murder four people in the woods in cold blood? The guided are a magical group that takes action now and receives justification later, and yet they are always justified. Even if the game never explicitly says it, they hold divine secrets and shelter the masses from information that they're not yet ready to accept, such as that the rolling mists that consume the land might actually be the blood of Satan, that the world is round, and who actually built the pyramids. On the opposite end of this is the Blanacera, who have dominion over the mind. Whereas the guided use intuition, the Blanacera know. The Blanacera have powers that, quite frankly, I don't fucking understand. And that scares me. They have pocket dimensions, unintentional mind reading, and god mode hacks. They sell themselves out to the highest bidder, but are also in tune with God's will, knowing secrets lost to man to further his agenda of eradicating evil, which may have won an ancient battle that no one actually knows about. Almost none of this is explicitly stated. The story can be enjoyed without understanding how or why either groups are involved in the lore, and I appreciate that the game allows me to find the information to make my own decision on the morality of these groups instead of fedora tipping or cramming it down my throat. There's a lot of background lore that could never be unveiled until the sixth episode, and I can't even really show you a lot of the clips of episode six without spoiling a good portion of the game. However, once you get there, the game does something amazing. 
You know, most of the way up until this point has been linear with non-linear set pieces, with you going from point to point, moving forward as the plot feels that you should. Here in episode 6, they set up a bunch of cool shit and just let you experience it if you choose to. A good early example of something that's kinda like this is the Marna Stretch, where you just walk from point A to point B if you want, and have upwards of four ways to deal with something blocking your path, with an absolute metric fuck ton of hidden goodies and side quests to take on in between. If you want to rush to the area, you could probably do it in, you know, like 10 minutes, even less if you want to cheat. However, if you want to explore everything, it could take you upwards of two hours or even more to get everything. The entire six episodes is like that. Sure, you're still moving from plot point to plot point, but more of this ever-expanding region is being shown to you, and quite a bit of it is easily missable, and I can safely say that you will never find everything in a normal playthrough without a guide. I'd like to take this point in time, in the review, to just remind you that rewards are never bad in this game. The absolute apex of how rewarding this game can be is actually sort of already on my channel. At some point in the story, you need to get a MacGuffin. The only problem is that you're out of legal ways to obtain it. How you achieve our goal is actually pretty open-ended. Even though this is an isolated section of the game, it's crammed full of stuff to do. Such as throwing alcohol at a woman until she cancels you, cock-blocking a guy, twice, being the worst date on the face of the planet, ghosting a thirsty old woman, taking advantage of two people in love, and hiding inside of a chest to break into the vault. All of this is optional, the section can be completed in less than 5 minutes, and results in you showing some fat fuck that whoever said the pen is mightier than the sword was probably a virgin. And then, you go to court, where your defense lawyer is also the best character in the game, and decides to slander your accuser for the entire hearing. You fat, fucking, disgusting, ass-smelling, blop, cheese-drinking, Crisco-bathing, and then you win. And I just won. Truly, Lanthurionis is a man that we should all aspire to be, but fail to become. This game is chocked full of good moments, and uh, if I'm being completely honest, I've already said way too much. Go out and play it, it's free. RPG Maker 2000 is outdated, so I will attempt to provide some links which may help the game run as intended, instead of like complete and utter dog shit. I'm sorry that this review has taken so long to do, but please understand that I procrastinated and I have no excuse. Thank you for watching and have a good one.